Welcome, Watchers of Illusion, to my Castle of Confusion. And I'm looking at Scramble Infinity. Yes, Commodore 64, nonetheless. And I've got to tell you, the C64 seems to be in its bloody prime at the moment. Some cracking games have been released on it recently, and some of them have been reviewed on this channel. And here is another one, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Yes, based on the arcade game of Scramble, you can see here that the C64 has done a marvellous job of being very, very close to the arcade. And, uh, well, we're going to get stuck in because, well, I mean, the quality of games at the moment is absolutely phenomenal. And again, this is independent. It is free. You can download this for free. Don't quite understand, you know, why you'd want to download it for free. You know, maybe tip the developers, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, but definitely, definitely you need to give this a try. Uh, so graphically, look at it. It's absolutely bloody superb. Um, there's not really any sort of negatives at all on the graphics. The the fact that you fire two two sort of I say bullets, not really bullets, are they? Uh, cannons, shall we say. And a missile at the same time, which is great. So the idea of the game is to get from one zone to another to another without running out of fuel. And... Uh, yeah, just causing as much destruction as you can, which is always a nice thing to do. So, those of you who are familiar with Scramble, and, you know, to be fair, it's a bit of a golden oldie, but that's what we're all about here, isn't it? Um, this game was very good fun, actually, on the arcade, so we're now seeing it on the C64. And it's bloody marvel. Look at it. It's just glorious. It's uh, It really does pull out all the stops when it comes to graphics. It's really, really nice. The... the rolling is silky smooth and you've got so much going on as well you've got like volcanoes you've got missiles going off you've got nice backdrops in the background as you go into caves and stuff like that there's a lot to see but the game premise is really simple as well um i wouldn't say it's an easy game by any stretch of the imagination but you know what let's just enjoy it i mean feast your eyes on the prize because it really is a glorious game. And they've done a fantastic job in keeping it in, in check with the arcade version as well, which is really nice. This stage, however, <laughs> is bloody hard. Uh, trying to avoid those... Uh, I think they're fireballs, but they kind of look a little bit like octopuses when you look at it from a, from a certain angle. But no, no, the graphics are superb, absolutely bang on. And the little spaceship animations as well are really nice. The level design, absolutely cracking. And, you know, the difficulty level ramps up as you go. And it ramps up quite considerably too. So, um, we're going to go as far as I can uh, with the time. You know, normal normal sort of time, I'm guessing, but between 10 and 15 minutes or so. And, and we'll see what we can do and what we can see. But so far, I am really, really impressed that this is on a C64. I mean, you could be forgiven to think it was on, an on, the, on the NES, really, couldn't you? Um, the quality of games at the moment coming out on the C64 certainly rival the uh, Nintendo at the moment. Uh, talking Nintendo, there's another great release. Um, the Abbe de la Moor is available now on the NES, so I should be looking at that at some point soon. Maybe maybe that'll be the next one. Who knows? I've covered it on C64 and uh, the Mega Drive, I believe. So it'd be nice to see what the NES version can do. So anyway, this, this game is... Like I say, quite simple. You've just got to get as much fuel as possible. Try not to crash your ship. And, uh, yeah, well, that's about it, really. Uh, this, this, I hate these ones. These, these are the levels that you've got to... Oh, poo. You've got you've to sort of, yeah, time, time your uh, movement so you don't smash into the landscape. But never mind. Sound is really nice. You haven't got much sound in-game. There's an absolutely stonking soundtrack at the start on the main menu screen, which is really, really nice. Uh, really encourage you to listen to that. Uh, but there's no music in game. It's all it's all sound effects, which is nice. Little explosions and bits and pieces going on, which is always nice to see. Uh, you've got your fuel gauge at the bottom, so you can see how much fuel you've got left. Your lives in the top left, and this is all that was. Oh, this this level, this is horrible, horrible, horrible. Oh, uh, you see, the really, really puts your um, really puts you on edge. God, bloody hell. Oh no. Bodged it too far forwards. Never mind. Okay, so you basically have three lives, and uh, and a hell of a time getting through the levels. But uh, 
Hey, we could use this as a challenge, couldn't we? We could do this on the uh, I tap that challenge. Uh, you just basically get as high a score as you can with the lives given to you. That could be that could be good. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, I mean it's really nice. The controls are nice too. Uh, up, down, left, right, and smash into the wall. That's about all you need to know. And fire, of course, which. Uh, you don't even need a separate button for missiles. It just automatically fires them, which is great. Now, uh, this level's giving me a bit of a hard time, but, you know, it's... I've not... This is the first time I've played it, so, hey! Uh, I'm not saying that I'm going to get any better the more I play it, because I just can't seem to be able to time this right for some reason. The, um, the fuel is plentiful, and... Oh, you can see there's just a really... No! Just sets your nerves on edge a little bit, but... Really nice layout on the uh, hood, on the uh, heads-up display, which is really nice to see. And um, yeah, this this game would appeal to most people who have played this in the arcade. And you know what? Even if you haven't played it in the arcade, it's time for you to have an education. This is what games were all about. This is as probably as simple a game as Asteroids. But uh, yeah, it does get a bit tricky around this level because you run out of place to back up and you need to sort of shoot forwards. And I'm not going to make this one either, so poop. But, you know, we'll start again when, when we get game over. There you go. There's the lovely, lovely little start there. So you get a nice little bit of music there, as you can hear. Um, but the, look, at the, look at the level design on this. The colours are amazing on this. Really, really nice. Different colours on the mountainscape and all that kind of thing. Really, really cool. Um, it just sort of it loses that when you go inside the building at the, the, where I was getting stuck uh, just now. But you know you can't have you can't have it all all of the time. But this is fantastic. I mean I would just been happy to have just scrolled through this cons consistently. It's really really good, and the level of detail on everything is nice as well. The rockets aren't too too bad to avoid. Trying to hit the fuel is a challenge, but then it always has been. Uh, you get more points for hitting the, those little building things as well, which is nice. You do get points for hitting the rockets, but they don't show you a score multiplier or anything like that, so you just got to keep an eye on your scoreboard. Um, but yeah, sound, graphics, and control so far, absolutely mint. I love this. This is a really nice stage, as it's so you just get that impression of going into the dark abyss of the caves. Um, but yeah, it's all there. It's all there. If you played Scramble on the arcade, you'll you'll be familiar with a lot of these enemy types. Um, but it was a great little game. It was like a, a 10p or so, as pet ten, maybe 10 cents in uh, in the good old US. Uh, but it was 10 pence per play in uh, the UK, um, and that was before these machine operators got a bit greedy and started charging 50p to a pound a play, which is just poo. Um, but yeah, 10p a play we, we used to have in our local arcades. Um, our local, well, I say local arcade. Our closest arcade would have been Western Supermare. So if you're actually from the UK, you'll know exactly where that is, um, because it's often referred to as Western Super Mud because the the tide always seemed to be out, and it was just a big muddy splotch rather than a nice pleasure beach. But there we go. Um, love the difficulty ramp up as well. This is really nice. It's it uh, it does test you once you get to a certain point in the game. Uh, so. Give it a go. If you like a challenge, you're going to love this one. I don't know what happens once you reach stage six and complete it. I don't know whether it re-rolls or whether there's new levels, because I don't think I'm going to get there in the time that we've got today. But uh, this was definitely one of those games. And it's been a really big release as well. Uh, there's been quite a few releases today, uh, which I'm hoping to bring a few more of those to you before New Year, which would be nice. Uh, just so we can all chill out and enjoy New Year's Eve uh, together. And, um, yeah, has anyone got any plans for New Year's? I'm not sure what I'm doing yet, but um, I'm sure something will pop up. And, uh, yeah, oh, poo, missed that missile completely. That was really, really good. Hey, hey, hey. So, yes, I would say that you've got a really, really good uh, replay value here as well because you're going to probably want to come back and beat your scores if not your time as, or maybe try and get as far as you can in a quicker time uh, see what see if you can actually destroy everything in the level maybe so there's definitely replay value and uh, just the playability of the entire game not doing so well on this run uh, the, the playability of the game as well is just absolutely phenomenal so you've got to give this one a go and any age group really because it's a spaceship dropping missiles on things Woo -hoo! Oh, you can't go wrong with that can you 
So all age groups. Give it a go. Go and support the developers though, because this is an absolutely amazing port. Well, it's not a port. It's you know it's been re it's been written. So there you go. But it's it's a you know it's a version of Scramble. So and a damn good version of Scramble at that. So I hope you've enjoyed the review today. It's a bit shorter than normal, but I'm going to let it run for a bit and uh, I will be back very soon with a brand new one for you and it will be a brand new one. I've got some cracking games to look at and, uh, well, yes, we've only got a couple of days left in which to do it. So um, I'll let you know what I'm going to do New Year because I'm not sure what I'm going to do regarding the channel New Year's. I might just do a few of these nice reviews this week and then we'll have New Year's off and then we'll plunge straight into it in the new year. Uh, because 2022 is literally just around the corner. I can't believe where the time has gone, to be fair. Uh, but the channel's doing quite well. So thank you ever so much to everybody that subscribes. And thanks to everybody that shares any of the videos. Uh, I do appreciate that. Your support is paramount to keeping the channel on the air. So uh, yes, let's move forward into 2022. And uh, let's have a good one. So uh, yes, I shall bring you a brand new one. I'm not going to make this. Not gonna make oh, I did make it. Bloody hell. How the hell did I do that? Okay, um, I will be back very soon with a brand new game for you to check out. And I hope you've enjoyed this review. This has been Scramble Infinity and beyond. Um, out on the Commodore 64, I've been Rich. This has been the Retro Revival Show. And I will be back very soon. Until then, my fellow geekaholics, you keep it retro. And as always, it's bye for now. Ta-ta!